Hi guys, I'm Billy Nelson. I'm an apprentice lineman here at Cass County Electric in Fargo. I went to school to be an electrical lineman, uh, 10 months in college, and then now I'm continuing on my four-year apprenticeship program. But in college, I learned how to climb, set poles, frame poles, terminate underground. Here at Cass County, I am continu continuing my four-year apprenticeship program through book work and on the job hours. We need 8,000 hours to become a journeyman. I'm right around 6,000, so 8,000 hours ends up being about four years, 2,000 a year. Now we're doing hot work here, and I'm going to show you some of the tools and PPE equipment that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Here's some safety equipment, personal protective equipment. Uh, each lineman is assigned all of this um, and tools that we use on the job. First up, we have my rubber sleeves. This protects your upper arms and your forearm, whether you're climbing in a bucket truck or working on underground power lines. Comes up here and wraps around your shoulder and goes to your wrist. This is specialized rubber. We check it every day before we use it. Um, you can't just go to the store and buy this. It's special order. Here we have our high voltage rubber gloves. Um, Again, special rubber. We test it every single day. They're personally assigned, so everybody has their own pair here at work. And then we have our secondary voltage gloves. These are low voltage for working on, on meter bases, the secondaries in our transformers, and street lights. And then we have cut-proof leather gloves here. Um, it helps keep your hands protected, whether you're stripping cable, um, cutting cardboard boxes open, just simple things. And we also, even the clothes we wear, have to wear special clothing. These are FR clothes, which is fire retardant. Um, that means if there was to be an accident, they won't keep burning. Um, we wear st steel toe boots so we don't hurt our feet on the job. And we have, we have electric rated hard hats so that our hard hats even don't conduct elec electricity. We're required to wear safety glasses also, of course. And we have our climbing gear here. This is my belt. It's a lot thicker than the belt you use to hold up your pants. Um, this has to carry all your body weight and strap you to the pole. And these are the gaffs that you put your foot here and then you strap it around your leg. These gaffs have big sharp spikes in them that dig into the wood of the pole. And you can climb up it just like a ladder. This is a piece of our underground primary wire. On the very inside we have the conductor. This is where the, the 7200 volts is at. Right here is the insulation, which shields the conductor from the other parts of the wire. This wire is almost a two-in-one wire. In a normal house, you would have a phase and a neutral. In our mainline wire, we have both into one conductor. So we have the hot, we have some insulation, and this black part here we call semicon. It's just another layer between the insulation and our neutral. This is copper here. This is our neutral wire for this, for this phase. And then our outside protectant jacket, which keeps water and dirt off of all the good parts. And you'd think it wouldn't be as dangerous as overhead, but I feel it's quite a bit more because you can't see it under the dirt. I'll go to our shotgun here. We call it a shotgun because you can pump it just like a firearm. Mike was talking about our old sticks used to be made out of wood and dirt would be embedded into the grain and it, it would hold moisture and make it conductive. All of our new sticks are fiberglass. They're much easier to wipe off. You can test them. They're a lot more safe also. They're rated for, they're rated for insulating for a lot higher voltage. This is one that I would say we use the most for close close quarters. Um, 
The hook up top, you're able to turn clamps such as this up in the air. See how this has to spin to open up and close? You can put it in the hook and then rotate the whole tool. And it helps keep us away from the energized lines. You never want to go and touch it, even with your special gloves. You want to try and stay away from it. Just in case a arc was ever to happen, the further are you away, you are away, the less danger you're in. Imagine it as getting close to a campfire. You stand 10 feet back, you can't feel the flame. If you're right next to it, it's very hot. Um, so this is our shotgun. We also have fiberglass extendo sticks, we call them. They telescope out and lock together for reaching up higher to higher wires. Um, we also use them to beat ice off the lines during winter storms. Um, the ice will build up onto the wire and it will take a wire from going from being this big to about that. And then it also makes the wire very heavy so it hangs down, which is dangerous to both people and animals. If the wires sag, they can get close to the ground. So we need to go and beat the wire off. Squirrels also like to travel our lines. Um, if you notice, you'll see squirrels and birds walking up on our wire. And Mike was talking about equal potential. When they just touch one wire, it's perfectly fine. It doesn't hurt the squirrel, it doesn't hurt our wire. But as soon as they get on to our transformers, in everybody's yard, the can that knocks our lines down from 7200 to 12240 for your houses, they uh, end up blowing a fuse. It stinks, um, but it's a quick fix. We can get your house turned back on and keep you guys happy. Mike went into, if wires were laying on the ground, you, you aren't able to see electricity. It's very, it's safe if you treat it properly and you have the right personal protective equipment. But don't, if there's a storm and you have wires laying on the ground or a tree falls, don't go try and touch them. Don't grab a wooden stick and say, oh, I saw this on a safety video. Just talk to your parents and call us and we'll get it fixed. We have the right equipment. We have the knowledge to work on it. and. We just want everybody to be safe. Same goes for underground wires. Um, if there's construction work going on in the neighborhood and there's a big pit and you see wires in the hole, don't go try and touch them. They're exposed so people know where they're at and they don't hit them. But it's, they're just as dangerous as overhead lines. They might be a little bit bigger around, but that doesn't mean they're safe.